everybody in this episode we're going to look at the lead guitar on planetary misalignment played by jimmy mockleys and he killed it what i'm going to show you is a couple of things that i did he did um two different passes of the lead guitar track and then he did some solos and i comped a couple things together here so jimmy gave me uh two different lead guitar passes to work with so uh, what i decided to do I could have just picked which one was my favorite, but they're both really good. And there was something kind of cool. I just thought, well, what happens if I double track it? And where I have guitar, lead guitar one and the alternate lead guitar two, and I play them together. What do I get? I'm going to start with that, just this doubling uh, thing. And uh, we'll start with uh, the choices. Like you can either have them level wise the same, where they get doubled together that way. Or you might have one that's more dominant, and that's what I decided to do. Uh, his guitar two solo lead, to me, felt like a good, more dominant sounding track. So this is just that track. There's no effects on this right now. I'm going to play the other lead track. I'm going to play them both together, but I'm also going to show you the panning. So on the lead guitar two, that's the more primary one. I've got it 50 to the left, 80 to the right. So it's not super hard panned. Um, so it's a little tighter compared to on lead guitar one. I got it 85 to the left, 100 to the right. So it's so I'm sort of surrounding my dominant lead guitar two track with that lead guitar one track. So that's kind of sitting a little wider. Uh, and this is what they sound like together. So now, uh, Jimmy already got a good tone as far as things like putting compression on his, his lead tone and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't do any compression on these tracks. Um, I'm going to take a look at what I did do. So let's start with lead guitar number two, which is my dominant one. I just took out a couple of nodes, uh, 182 hertz and 70 hertz, and I'll just bypass this so you can hear it and with it in. There's just a lot of energy happening right here. So it still sounds fat to me, but it's just a little cleaner. Let's take a look at the EQ on the other track. And I actually used the same one because this tone is pretty much used the same tone. So I just duplicated that same thing. So this is the lead guitar one, my secondary lead part. This is with the EQ. And this will be without it. Just a little, little muddier, a little less clear. Next, looking on my dominant guitar, my Lindell 80 plug. So what did I do here? A couple things. So his tracks were coming in kind of hot. So I made some line adjustments here. Uh, that's part of it. And then on EQ, I just did some shelving. 18K up top, 70K down the bottom. And on the... The supporting guitar, exact same thing there. Notice I've got, on the supporting guitar, I've got a gate in there. And I don't know, did I put a gate in? Yeah, I put a gate in on both. Because there's a little noise that you were hearing, uh, just ring out and things like that. Right, so this is bypassed. Both of them, let me just pick the, the dominant one. And this is with the shelving, and the gating. And the second one. So 
So it's just cleaning up the little gaps is all the gate is doing. Uh, I want to get as much of that sustain in there as possible. And that's sort of a trick with the gate is where your threshold is. So I got my threshold fairly low. So it waits to the last possible second and then keeps it clean. That's all the EQ, no compression because Jimmy's already compressing it. So let's look at this one other thing I've added. So on my principal Lee guitar, I'm adding some Dr. MS, a little spatial processing. And this one's kind of cool. It definitely gives a little more focus to that lead. So this is without it, and then I'll add it in. And with it. So I really dig that. It's I think it sounds really cool. And now I'm going to put both in, but I'm going to bypass Dr. MS and then I'll bring it back in. To me, that sounds pretty cool. And then the more important question is, how does that sound with the rest of the rhythm section? So that definitely adds some coolness to how that lead sounds. Now, there's one other aspect of this lead, which is that in the arrangement, it's being doubled with alto sax. And that comes in right here. Let me play the same, the similar A section. That's another little factor that I got to keep in my mind, which is that uh, it's being doubled with the alto sax at times. So what does that sound like? So if I just play those two together. Right. So what happens if I take out that Dr. MS? It makes it more pointed, but I like the fatness. I think that is a nice little touch. So that's one of the other goodies. So now let's look at what I did in the solo guitar. So there's a solo section. So let me play you just soloed what he's got as far as the raw track. <laughs> Like because there is you know some amp noise and things like that, I just trimmed the gaps so that I could get it as clean as possible. On the EQ side for that solo guitar, it was just a little 82 hertz, pulling that back a little subtractive EQ there. That's all I've got on the Pro Q. This is without it and with it. So just it, there's some muddiness down there that even though it's a little lower than what you'd normally call your mud frequencies, it just helps clean it up a little bit. So that's the pro Q. And then a um, little 70 hertz shelf, nothing up top. And I'm using gate. And that's pretty much it on this. So this is without the Lindell. Right, and this is with it. So you could hear the difference in the signal level because um, before I, I kick this in, it's pretty stinking loud. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just trimming it back because my overall level was well, not quite sitting in a good spot. So 
so that just cleans it up a little bit more with uh, the gating and here's the next thing I added little delay multi stereoized delay this is without it right and with it So it's kind of, it's kind of a cool delay because it's it's definitely like got some stuff going on the sides, but it's it's not quite like a reverse reverb kind of vibe, but it, it just it just puts a little cooler kind of color, different kind of energy to it, which I, I happen to like a lot. Uh, so I've got that going down, a little modulated delay, and then a little Doctor MS uh, using that same vocal focal uh, preset as a starting point. Uh, this is without it and then with it. Versus with it. So that just feels like it's much more pointed and direct. And let's hear it with the track that he's playing with. I think that sounds pretty darn good. Uh, level wise, it feels like, you know, I still got some work to do on the track. To, I, I think that the solo guitar could be a little hotter. I haven't found my sweet spot on that yet, but this is all part of this process as we're getting all the tracks from the different players on the album and everybody's recording remotely. So far, it's been just a huge joy and a lot of fun to do this project. Uh, so that's, what I've got on this sort of lead guitar in this particular tune in this episode. Next episode, I'm going to be looking at what my buddy Nick is doing on the Fender Rhodes on this tune. So we'll see you then. <laughs>